One, two, three. <laughs> Welcome to ATV TV. I'm Darren Dance, and we're here at the Ballarat Racecourse with Brian Johnson. I know a lot of you are surprised to see Brian here this week after Collingwood got absolutely hammered by Port Adelaide on Saturday night. And um, I'm looking after him. He's on suicide watch. It's a big job, but I can handle it. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Darren. Well, the footy's over. Let's get on to the racing because the smell of springs in the air here at Ballarat today. But unfortunately, there's no horses and no jockeys. And I wish I had a name that when I loved about three o'clock. Well, the jockeys and the, the races were called off here today at Ballarat. We're standing in the manor yard, and um, everyone else has gone home, but ATB, here, we're here going strong. So um, let's just have a look at our racing roundup for last week, Brian. And we go back to Geelong on uh, Friday, and Magnus Bell ran a nice third at Geelong. A little bit unlucky. No match for the winner, who won by seven. Uh, but I thought a run was good. Um, a little bit inconvenienced in the straight. But they ran home in 33-6. Um, she made ground, so she couldn't go any faster than that. But the winner stakes place, Brian. But I think, you know, we'd be happy with that run. Yeah, very happy. And there's a, there's a race for her in coming weeks. It's just a matter of um, finding the right race. And I think if anyone can do that, it's Darren Weir at the moment. He's finding winners all over, the, all over the state. On Saturday, we didn't have any runners, but we came up for the Ballarat Turf Club for the awards night. And, and we had a, a fantastic night. Um, very, very social, very relaxed. And it was just a great atmosphere. And congratulations to the owners of Platelet. Um, Platelet took out the Ballarat Horse of the Year for a local horse. The first horse trained out of Ballarat to win two Group 1s in probably 140 years. That's a fantastic achievement, really, when you think about it. Yeah, wonderful mare, Platelet, and she's been great for owners, and she'll be racing in on the weekend. It's going to be great to see her this spring. And, and just touching on the awards, it was great to see Steve and Michelle Payne up there as ambassadors for the Ballarat Cup. I think it was, I think it was probably the highlight of the night outside of Platelet. Well, the highlight of the night, night for me, mate, was uh, singing the Port Adelaide theme song. I'm surprised you knew the words. Well, I sounded good, I must admit. Anyway, on Sunday, uh, Stylish Lily was having her second career start at uh, Warwick Nabil for Darren Weir and Dean Yandel Road and 1,000 metre jump and run. And she was caught wide. She got a little check on the corner and she looked gone, but she came back and won well and it was quite a strong win. Yeah, good win. And Dean had uh, done a great job with her to, uh, to get her where she was and get her in the straight in a great position. And she just powered, and powered home in the last 50 and won really well. Earlier today, I caught up with Darren Weir and asked him about Stylish Lily. On Monday, we travelled down to Warrnambool and watched tons of Rossa start for Matty Williams. Disappointing filly on the track so far and uh, a filly with a lot of ability, but um, on Monday at Warrnambool, we expected her to win. She started favourite, but she jumped and over-raced Brian and she fought with Dean the whole way and when he finally did let her go, she, she shot to the front but was run down late to get beat. Only at three lengths, which I thought was good, but... She just needs to learn how to race. Yeah, needs to learn how to settle. And I think well, the first 600 metre, Dean couldn't sort of control her. And by the end of the race, he just ran, ran out of breath. And in the last 50, she had nothing. But Maddie will sort that out. And in coming weeks, she'll see a better horse. Then on Tuesday, uh, we didn't go to Kembla Grange, but we watched it on TVN. And um, Chris Waller had Sir Dylan in for us. He ran a creditable fourth um, second up over uh, 1,600 metres. And I thought um, he just lacked that little bit of sprint at the end. But... Chris said yesterday when we were in Sydney that he would get up to 2,000 at his fourth run in and he'd be ready to go. Yeah, I was, he's a staying type. He's going to need three or four runs to get him in shape. And I think Chris wants him out to about 2,000 or more and he's going to be winning races as well. Yesterday we jumped on the big jet star and flew up to Sydney and uh, made our debut at uh, Warwick Farm. And um, Warwick Farm, it's quite away from the airport, Brian. Um, now I know why well, that taxi driver had a big grin on his face when we jumped in and said Warwick Farm. Yeah. Especially when I said I'll, I'll pay the taxi this time, Darren. It was a, it cost quite a bit in the end, didn't it? <laughs> it was a long way. And uh, if you haven't been to Warwick Farm, I think it's like Sandown, getting in, getting in a cab at Tullamarine and going to Sandown. But look, it was a great day. It was really relaxing, um, laid back, enjoyable. Um, we enjoyed the day. Abasso made his debut for uh, Chris Waller over 1,400 and it was quite a strong field. And it was quite a good run from Abasso first up to run third. Beaten two lengths, um, but the run was full of merit. And his condition, he loomed on the corner just to look like he's going to win it. But uh, condition just gave out in the last 80 metres and finished off third. And He's going to go to uh, back to Warwick Farm on the Sunday after the AFL Grand Final. And um, Hugh Bowman gave a nice rap, Brian, when he got off. He spoke to you. 
Yeah, he said it after the race, his horse will win next start, so hopefully we can get good odds when it goes back to Warwick Farm. But it was good to see the owners up there, like it stood up there in the straight because it looked like it was going to uh, go the lead there, but they're trying to meet a mark, but as he said, it just ran out of puff. But nice horse, impeccable pedigree, pred- 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 and it's going to be a very good horse. So that's a wrap for the last week. So uh, Stolish Lily the, Lily, the star for the week, Platelet the star in the awards arena. And uh, looking forward, I guess... Um, our next runner will be uh, Ticket to Turak on Saturday at Mooney Valley. The Matthew Williams trained Ticket to Turak, who ran a nice third um, last start and um, up it to 1500. What do you make of the race? It was a little bit unlucky last start. This is a pretty tricky race. You've got, I think, six last start winners, and I think you've had three one at Mornington last start, two one at Ballarat, and they're all very impressive in the races that they won. So Ticket to Turak's about 21, I think, 20, 21 dollars at the moment each way. Probably, probably good value because it was a good run last time. Got a little bit unlucky in the straight, didn't get out in time, and the winner had sort of already flown the coop. But, yeah, I think each way it's a good chance. Ben Mallam goes on, senior rider. Um, where do you see him finishing in the run? I, I would think from his draw, I think Barry 3, he should be sitting around third or fourth, hopefully on the fence, maybe one at, one off the fence. And from there, he should be able to get himself into the race. It's just, if he's good enough, he should be able to uh, be in the finish. Are you going to back him each way? I think I will. Yeah, I reckon tomorrow we find out just where Ticket Turak fits in the mix. Um, he's fit. He's had a couple of runs in. He's up to 1,500. He's got a good rider, got a good gait. He's been to the Valley before, and I think Saturday we just find out where he fits in the mix. If he's going to be Saturday City class, maybe not quite, or a little bit better, I think we'll find out when we walk away on Saturday. We will, and interestingly enough, the horse that beat him in the Clockwise Classic here at Ballarat on Ballarat Cup Day, I'm too sexy, in the first. So if that runs all right in the first race, probably a good guide as well. Insightful. You're very insightful, Brian. Um, then our star mare makes her return to racing on Saturday in Platelet. Um, she's been off the scene since she won those two Group 1s in Adelaide in May, and she's a fantastic mare, and I know she had a gallop here at, on the course proper on Monday, and Darren was very, very happy with her. And uh, she's drawn three with Ben Mallamon as well. Yeah, she has, and I spoke to Darren on Tuesday at the Barren Beach Trials, and he's very happy with her gallop on Monday and expects her to run really well. Earlier today, we caught up with Darren Weir and, and asked him about platelet's chances. Also on the weekend, um, we're expecting uh, Tack de Boistron to race at Chester over 2,400. Um, Chester's a, a smallish track, uh, 2,400. Um, it's raining over there in England. The temperature's dropped from last week from 25 back to 12 degrees. So winter's coming in hard and strong there in the UK. And uh, he ran a nice race last start, Brian, Tack de Boistron, uh, when he resumed for Marco Body, ran third. And um, we'd be expecting him to do something similar in this listed class race. For sure, and the wit, the wit of the better too for Tack. And Marco's very happy with the horse, as he is with our Melbourne Cup hopeful Dan Dino. But yeah, if he can get a wet track, he's going to be very hard to beat. Speaking of Dan Dino, he, he would be entering quarantine right now. Um, as we speak, he was on a truck on his way to quarantine, and he'll be spent two weeks there. And he arrives here on AFL Grand Final Day, Brian. And uh, yeah, it's not far to the Caulfield Cup, and I guess we're all excited and, and can't wait to see what happens. Oh, it's going to be very exciting. Some of the owners are, uh, look can't wait to get, sort of get down and see him race. It's going to it's been one of the owners. I'm pretty excited myself to have a call for a cup runner. Uh, who's our best of uh, three runners for the weekend? I would say Platelet, Group One winner, coming returning from a spell. I haven't said that she hasn't won first up before, but she hasn't missed a place either. So probably each way. I'm, I'm very worried about moment of change. Um, he's a very very good horse, fresh, and I'm sure if Peter Moody's wants to win with him first up, he's going to have him wound right up. So he'll probably lead. And uh, we're going to have the last crack out of him. So she goes good first up. As you say, she hasn't won first up, but Darren Weir's really pleased with us. So we'll just see what happens. We're going to have a lot of runners over the next three to four weeks. Uh, I've just been sitting down with Darren Weir earlier today, going through all of the horses that trialled out at Burren Beach during the week. And there's there's quite a few that he's got penned in to race over the next few weeks. Um, not sure if I can remember them all, but I know that Refill's ready to go. General Lamore's ready to go. Um, Evans is ready to go again. Um, obviously, Stylish Lily will be racing. Uh, there's, there's quite a few there, Brian, that are that are ready to go over the next fortnight. Yeah, a few of them tried really well on Tuesday. Like Glock and Spill uh, had a good win. Don't tell them too much, right? Don't tell them too much. 
I think everyone would have seen how excited Lockie McKenzie was at Barrow Beat, the way the horse won. But, yeah, nice horse. As you say, Reef was a good run. It got a few outstanding horses. Tyu, when it gets back to the race, is going to be very hard to beat as well. Looking forward to the spring. Well, as everything ticks closer... Um We'll get back to you next week, and hopefully we can get a couple of winners up over the next few days, and there's a lot of runners for next week. So I think Refuel might even be going to Bendigo next Wednesday, so he may well go around before you hear from us next Thursday. So look out for Refuel at Bendigo on Wednesday as well. We'll also be writing to you this week about the Breakfast with the Stars at Werribee on October 12th, and anyone who wants to come along can come and have a look at the internationals, and we'll have a nice breakfast there. and. And most of us will probably head down to the races after that. So put that in your diary. Uh, October 12th at Werribee at about 7 a.m. If you want to come along, we'll have a big day there. So until next week, I'm Darren Dance on Suicide Watch with Brian Johnson. Cheers.